All right, well, this is what I think is the most important news. I learned what Zscaler is from Doug Spindler, who appears with me on my podcast. And um, it's a really good idea. But, and, uh, but anyway, it's very hard to understand. Um, the original model of security involves, uh, this is the model that Microsoft recommended until 2002. You define a local area network like the computers within your building. Then you define a network perimeter, like the gateway from the internet into that network. And then you protect yourself at the network perimeter with a firewall. Everything inside that perimeter is trusted. So you have these big heavy computers sitting on desktops connected with ethernet cables, and they are trusted. And every one of them therefore can access all the things in the network, the server, the printer, uh, the domain controller, each other's shared files, and all that jazz. That was the old model. You have a trusted network, and you have a security boundary. Now, the problem, of course, is that all decayed really fast. First, everybody started getting portable devices and bringing them in. So you now have devices that might have picked up malware outside brought into your trusted boundary and data that's confidential leaving your trusted boundary going out to coffee houses and airplanes and God knows where. And then you started using cloud services like Dropbox and OneDrive and Gmail. So all these company data is not inside your boundary. It's out somewhere on some other service and you don't really have it under your control. So this whole model of having a trusted network and a security boundary is completely obsolete. And that's why the U.S. government has recommended that for several years now we should all be moving to zero trust, where we just accept that we're like swimming in the ocean and things are flying in and, and nobody is really uh, safe anywhere. And that's what Zscaler provides. I've been saying for years to people that the zero trust is a goal, but there's not something you could buy that would implement it. But now there is, and that thing is Zscaler. What Zscaler does is it, it, it replaces that model of a trusted network and a security boundary with zero trust. Everybody authenticates into the Zscaler system in the cloud individually. So instead of your devices connecting to each other and the trusted network, they all connect to Zscaler in the cloud only. And then when one endpoint requests, may I please access this shared server, Zscaler makes a decision whether that endpoint is trusted enough to be allowed to access that resource or not. And you have that separate test for everything you do. So that's the idea. And I understand it's very expensive and being adopted rapidly by the rich companies. But um, this is, I think, what Zero Trust should be. Each one of you should just be an independent, each, each device on your network or service should be independently connected. And you should have, instead of having uh, unrestricted networking inside the firewall and restrictions outside the firewall, there should be rules for everything. Who can connect here? Who can connect there? All right, that's the idea. Anyway, that's what I wanted to explain uh, as best I can, because I think it's important. And the explanation is really needed, because Zscaler's explanation is almost completely incomprehensible. Uh, all right. And so uh, this is something I was talking about at RSA. Uh, the, the Internet is mostly AI generated now, and that is only going to get worse. And some studies have shown the intuitive solution that if you train an AI on the output of another AI, you just get worse and worse really fast. Now, a new uh, study came out saying that that's not so bad and people shouldn't worry about it so much, but uh, it seems like they are just not thinking it through well enough. They say if you train on a mixture of AI and non-AI generated content, then it doesn't get bad as quickly, but that doesn't really address the problem here. So. I think this touches a fundamental problem that is going to be huge as we go forward. Um, right now, all the social networks are suffering greatly, like Twitter did over the last many years, from automatically generated content that was not AI. And they tried to uh, distinguish genuine human interaction from non-genuine bot interaction, and they had great trouble with that. 
and in email we had great trouble telling the spam from the good email and now the whole internet is we're going to have to have some way to tell AI generated content from authentic content created by humans and you would of course like to train your model on authentic content created by humans if you want your model to become as smart as a human or able to emulate human content and that is tough anyway so this is going to be a big issue as we move forward on the internet uh, there's going to be some kind of uh, there's going to be a great demand for authentic human created content. Um, sort of like uh, you might want luxury furniture that was really handcrafted by an expert instead of just pressed out of plastic in an automated factory. The content actually generated by expert humans will, I think, be sought after and expensive and hard to obtain as more and more of everything is created by stupid AIs. And uh, there's this article, Unscientific American, which claims and gives details that Scientific American over the last 10 years or so has decayed from the mission of just presenting scientific evidence to promoting basically liberal uh, ideology, uh, which I think this is a, uh, the whole world has dealt with it, basically the rise of Donald Trump and the Republican Party. As the Republican Party under Donald Trump has adopted unscientific non-truth positions to an outrageous extent where they no longer believe in vaccination, uh, they no longer believe in elections, and just really fundamental things that we thought were true, they just abandoned them with no evidence and no argument to support them. They've just basically turned into a religion where they believe a bunch of utterly false things and demand that all their adherents believe them. Uh, the natural response of the people that are interested in actual truth and facts is to move to the left until they get start getting into uh, a sort of double talk pushing fashionable left ideologies as if they were scientific truth just because they're the opposite of what the right says. It's, it's an understandable consequence but um, I think it's important to point it out and understand it that uh, the politics is distorting the science even if what you're doing is rebelling against the side that's lying it's still distorting you. Anyway, uh, I'm going to stop it. That's enough of the news.